Well, my coffee is about um, about done here. So, um, okay, we're going to talk about I/O stat now. Let's go back to I/O stat. I/O stat. Um, and likewise, you can run that in a more continuous mode, I/O stat 30. And this will basically tell you um, about your disk access. And, uh, and I think there's a lot of other options as well. But this will um, uh, update your disk access every so often. And, um, and it basically tells you the number of blocks you're reading per second by your disk device and the number of blocks you're writing per second by your disk device. And, um, and there we see that we're on one disk. We seem to be writing an awful lot of um, um, blocks per second. I think that's because I'm trying to capture that. I'm doing a screen capture video, and all this video stuff is going down on my disk. So clearly, you know, I, I'm I'm doing a lot of disk access, and um, I find these difficult to read myself, but they are very useful. They're kind of difficult to read if you just read one, because I don't have too much intuitive feel for them. Um, but they're very, very useful if you run this in kind of a continuous mode. And when you're doing something heavy, then you notice these numbers, and they start to have meaning to you. But they only have meaning to you when you compare them against other numbers, so that you can see what the numbers are when the system's running well, and what the numbers look like when the system's running slowly. And then you get an idea of, of what the cutoff points are that you would like to maintain on your system. and what it would take to reconfigure your system so you get that sort of performance. In general, with performance, there are several different types of performance um, issues. I've spent a lot of my career doing scientific computation. In sci the typical scientific computation, people who do, you know, try to solve differential equations and do this climate modeling and all of that garbage. Um, or actually, even some of the mapping that I personally have been associated with, where you're doing a lot of clipping algorithms. So you've got this country, and then you want to see whether um, you, you draw a line, and you need to see whether this line, well, you draw a curve, which is billions of lines. And you want to see whether the line segment is inside the country or outside the country, because you don't draw it if it's outside of it. And those take enormous amounts of CPU. So uh, my experience is I'm very good at um, analyzing CPU-bound systems and memory-bound systems, because uh, the type of problems I've worked on, tend uh, the Computers tend to get memory bound, CPU bound. We like big parallel computers with lots of GPUs and all sorts of things like that. Um, a lot of business people are much, much better than I am at looking at I.O. problems because they're interested in these big databases and stuff. It doesn't do them any good to own these big computers with lots of GPUs and lots of CPUs. What they need is things that do disk I.O. incredibly fast, because they've got a lot of disk I.O. to do. Um, people who you know deal with um, internet-related sites, uh, websites, and things like that, um, they may have some database problems in back end because they're dealing with something because nowadays they're dealing with enormous databases. But traditionally, what they've had to deal with is network access problems. And so they'll be really good in monitoring uh, network issues. Um, so let's take a look at some of the other commands we have. I'm not going to look at these much in detail, but you should. Um, Net stat is a command for looking at your network. And and um, well, it, it kind of works like, uh, like top, I guess, for your network. Um, well, actually, no. Um, 
But netstat is is a command for looking at your network. Um, I oh I said IP config. IP config is of course a Windows command or a DOS command for looking at your network. The way we spell this in Linux, of course, is IF config, and I don't know whatever possessed me there, but uh, sorry for the, the, the typo. Sorry for the misspelling. Um, Etherreal, which has changed its name in recent years to Wireshark, is a graphical user interface command that lets you see what's going on with your net, um, with things going in and out of your network. And it's a really cool command to play with. And I do recommend people download that thing and just play with it. Ethereal. Oh, or maybe, yeah. And um, well, I'm not going to do it here, but. Uh, No interfaces. Oh, wait. I'm not going to worry about it right now. However, it's a fun command to use to, um, I see, what I uh, typed was commands to get me help here. Um, it's a fun, fun command, and it will show you every packet going in and out of your network, and and basically what goes in, or every packet that goes in and out of your network card, um, and basically um, it's a cool command because you can see a lot of stuff, and you can if your network card is set up so that it shares information with some other computer, like your networking topology is a bus instead of a, um, um, instead of all going into a smart switch, um, then you can actually see the um, IP packets that are meant for other people, and you can see everything that they're doing um, so that that you you yeah so that you can see their passwords you can see anything they do you can see their bank accounts well unless they're using SSH encryption or SSL encryption or something like that um, but you you'd be amazed what you can see and uh, so we, it's enlightening just from the fact of of knowing what people can see and can't see. Uh, every, you should run the ether reel sometime. Um, TCP dump is a lot like um, a SAR is for general monitoring. TCP dump is kind of the mother of all the monitoring commands. The truth is ether reel, all it does is it takes all the information that TCP dump gives you. And um, TCP dump is a command line. And um, Etherreal puts that into a nice little uh, GUI for you. Um, but basically, all Etherreal is doing is giving you a nice user interface to a TCP dump. In map, you should have used in uh, Lab 9. In map tells you what network ports are open. And one of the things you really, really should do is Always, always, always use InMap to look at your own computers. Look at them from both inside your computer, and if you get a chance, go outside of your computer and InMap back into your computer so you can see exactly what ports you have open and what services are open so that you do not have a service that you don't know about that happens to be open because that represents a uh, place where a system cracker can break into your computer, and that's kind of bad. Ping is for testing network connectivity. Um, it's a very, very useful command. I use that all the time. And then there's commands like EtherApe and NetDrift, which I'll let you read about. Um, uh, Truth is, they're not installed on a lot of machines, and and that's okay. Um, and those are all really topics for next term on um, the class on on um, Linux networking. So we're not going to go into those 
at all. Uh, likewise, there's a lot of wireless commands that you can use for monitoring um, such things as WaveMon um, and um, Kismet. Kismet is very, very popular because it will let you do packet sniffing like you would with Ethereal, only um, in the case of Kismet, you're doing a packet snack. Um, um, packet sniffing on um, on um, wireless devices. So in other words, what you're doing is, you know, you're going into a coffee shop. Well, no. What you shouldn't do is you're going into a coffee shop and you're reading everybody's mail as it comes across, uh, th comes through the air going to their computers. Uh, believe me, um, you know, that's trivial to do and, um, and widely done. And keep that in mind. Um, when you do use your wireless, um, um, keep in mind when you use your wireless that anybody can see stuff. Um, and keep in mind that that's why encryption is really, really important. Um, on the other hand, I don't use that as an excuse to close down my wireless um, or to, I'm not a big fan of using closed wireless. I like to let people use my, um, my wireless. I like to, like to let people use my, my resources because if I'm not using them, you know, somebody else might, might use them. It's just that you have to make sure your own equipment is, um, is tight so that People don't invade you where they shouldn't. OK. Um, which brings up computer security as a general issue. The book talks a little bit about computer security. That's a huge, huge topic. You can't talk too much about computer security. The only things that I would say about computer security is that a lot of people who are big on computer security are big because they want to control people. They want to run people's lives. They want to control people. They run these tight, tight systems with the idea that they're secure. Often these tight, tight systems are less secure than less, quote, quote, secure systems because they give people good reasons to break the rules. Uh, if somebody needs to break the rules to get their job done, they will and you can't really blame them for it. So I think it's very important that one right sizes security. If you're running in the CIA or a military organization, you have to operate on a need to know basis. If you're running in most organizations, certainly a scientific organization, you want to run on the opposite principle on a you know everything, unless there's some reason why something has to be kept very secret, like maybe, I don't know, uh, personnel records or um, certain, certain financial records. But in general, you try to open everything up. Uh, and you will get better security by doing that. It's really important to right size your security. Don't don't use security to control people. Um, that only results in poor system security. Security is a team effort. It involves everybody in the company working together and doing things in a reasonable manner. And, um, and, and that's probably my number one thing about security. It, it's also not just about these tight access roles on computers and stuff as much as it is setting a tone in an organization where uh, people recognize that keeping everything secure is important. Um, and, and that's why it's important to set the level of security, level of secrecy at the correct level, not too tight, not too loose. And, um, and then people understand that, and they live by it, and everybody supports that philosophy. So that's the best way to do things. Okay, that finishes the chapter. Bye-bye.